advanced lesson video for chapter 3, section 1, and as always, if you'd like all my videos in one spot, just subscribe to my channel. So chapter 3 is on states of matter, so let's go ahead and jump into section 1. So solids, liquids, and gases. Materials can be classified as solids, liquids, or gases based on whether their shapes and volumes are definite or variable. Shape and volume are clues to how the particles within a material are arranged. So if you look, for the solids, the particles are very close together and very orderly. That's important. For liquids, the particles are still very close together. See, this is what y'all like to do wrong. Y'all want to draw solids real close together. Y'all want to draw liquids kind of spread out and then gases really spread out. Well, liquids are still very close together because they're not easily compressed either. But you lose that order. It's no longer orderly. They're just kind of randomly aligned. And then a gas, of course, is all spread out all over the place. So, solid is a state of matter in which materials have a definite shape and a definite volume. So think of a brick. The shape and volume is not going to change if I put it in a bucket that's a different shape. However, the term definite doesn't mean that the shape or volume can never change. Because if I do take a brick and I have a sledgehammer and I hit the brick, I can force the shape to change. Almost all solids have some type of orderly arrangement of particles at the atomic level. So again, here's your solid particles. Very close, very orderly. Now, are the particles in a solid moving? I hope you can tell in this picture. I can tell. I don't know if you can tell. But they are moving. They vibrate in their fixed location. So if you see the little lines, that's showing vibration. A lot of my students want to say particles of a solid are not moving because they don't move past one another. But vibration in its fixed position, that's still movement. Liquids. A liquid is a state of matter in which materials have a definite volume but an indefinite shape. So what that means is if I have a 20 liter of Coke and I want to pour it in a 2 liter bottle, I can pour it in there and it's going to take the shape of the 2 liter bottle but it won't expand to fill the 2 liter bottle. It's just going to settle at the bottom because it's still only 20 ounces. Okay, so the shape can change but the volume will remain the same. The particles of a liquid are closed together but their arrangement is more random than the particles of a solid. So again, the particles are very close. If you have to draw a picture, I want them very close, but they are not orderly. Now, the particles of a liquid, they can flow past one another and change places, and they're moving faster than a solid. Okay, so this would be an example. Even this picture, I found this online. Um, this picture, I would even consider putting the particles closer together than this. It's hard for me to find moving pictures. and you know, Sometimes you just want a picture that moves. Gases. Gas is a state of matter in which a material has an indefinite shape and an indefinite volume. So a gas, if you put it in a larger container, it will actually expand to fill the container. I'll show you an example of that in class. Um, there is more space between particles in a gas than in a solid or liquid. Since the particles of a gas are far apart, they can be compressed easily. So we can take a lot of these particles and compress them down into a small area because they're far apart. So again, they're moving even faster than liquids and solids, and they're much more spread out. And because they're spread out, we can compress them. That's how um, things like oxygen tanks and helium gas tanks and all that kind of stuff work, is they compress a large amount into a small area. On Earth, almost all matter exists in a solid, liquid, or gaseous state. However, at extremely high temperatures, such as those found in the sun or other stars, matter exists as plasma. Plasma is a state of matter composed of positive ions and electrons. So atoms are made of your nucleus, which houses your protons and neutrons, and the electrons in the electron cloud. If you heat it up high enough, the electrons will separate from the atom. So if you lose your negatives, you're left with a positive. So you have positive ions and electrons occurring in your plasma. Kinetic energy is the energy an object has due to its motion. We've discussed this already way, way, way back in like chapter 11. Um, the faster an object moves, the greater its kinetic energy. The kinetic energy of matter says that, oh sorry, the kinetic theory of matter says that all particles of matter are in constant motion. So notice it says all particles of matter. It doesn't say everything but a solid is moving. All particles of matter are in constant motion. So solid, liquid, gas, and plasma, all the particles are moving. It's just in a solid, they're vibrating in their fixed location. At room temperature, the average speed of the particles in a sample of gas is about 1,600 kilometers per hour. Wow, that's really fast. 
some particles are moving faster than the average speed and some are moving slower than the average speed. So think about the average on a test. If I said, oh, our class average on the last test was an 84. That doesn't mean everybody made an 84. It means some people made higher, some people made lower. That's just the average. So when we're talking about speed of particles, we're talking about the average also. Each particle moves in a straight line until it collides with another particle or with the wall of a container. So in other words, like the particle is going to hit and then hit and then hit. It's not going to sit there and be going around in curly cubes. During a collision, one particle may lose kinetic energy and slow down while another particle gains kinetic energy and speeds up. But as we know about energy, what do we know? Law of conservation of energy. So total energy must remain the same. So think about a pool ball. You may have one still and you hit one. Once they collide, this one starts moving and now this one has stopped. So energy can be transferred. We already know that. It can change forms and it can change location. There are forces of attraction among the particles in matter. So uh, particles are attracted to one another through something called intermolecular forces. If the particles are far apart and moving fast, like they are in a gas, the attractions are weak and don't have much of an effect. Um, so in a solid and liquid, the particles are really close together. So remember, think about magnets. When magnets are close, we can feel the push and the pull. However, particles of a gas are spread out and moving really fast. So if I take two magnets and start doing like this, I'm not really going to feel the attraction or repulsion between the two of them because the magnets are far apart and they're moving very quickly. The constant motion of particles in a gas allows a gas to fill a container of any shape or size. So if I have a smaller container, I know these look the same size mainly because I made them the same size once I put them on the PowerPoint, but this was supposed to be a very small container. Even if I put that into a larger container, the gas will expand to fill the whole thing. Um, a colored gas, it will get lighter in appearance because the particles are spreading out more, but it will expand to fill the whole container. The kinetic theory of gases has three points. Particles of a gas are in constant random motion, so particles are constantly moving. The motion of one particle is unaffected by the motion of another particle unless they collide. And that's talking about those intermolecular forces. Like they're moving fast and quickly, so they don't have time to attract and repel one another. But if they collide, that will change the direction. Forces of attraction among particles in a gas can be ignored under ordinary conditions. Again, because they're just moving too fast and they're far apart. So particles are in constant motion, they're unaffected by each other, and attraction can be ignored. So the average speed of particles in a liquid is slower than particles of a gas. The particles of a liquid are closer together, so the attractions between the particles do affect the movement. So remember, particles of a liquid are close together. They are just random, but they are moving slower than a gas. A liquid takes the shape of its container because particles in a liquid can flow to new locations. Anything that can flow is called a fluid, and gases and liquids are fluids and can flow, solids or not. The volume of a liquid is constant because forces of attraction keep the particles close together. Again, I cannot stress this enough. Even in my chemistry class, people still miss the fact that the particles of a liquid are close together. Okay, so just keep that in mind. Just say Solids have a definite volume and shape because particles in a solid vibrate in fixed locations. So again, is there movement? Yes, it's just vibration, but it cannot flow past one another. So, section assessment. How are the shape and volume used to classify solids, liquids, and gases? Well, we look at is shape and volume definite or indefinite? So is the shape and volume definite or indefinite? And just really quickly, we'll go through it. So solids have definite shape and volume. Liquids have definite volume but indefinite shape. And gases have indefinite shape and volume. Number two, what does the kinetic theory say about the motion of atoms? It says that they are in constant motion, no matter what state of matter. So even the particles of a solid are moving. Number three, how is a gas able to, fill, uh, to fill a container of any size or shape? Well, remember, the particles are spread out. So if you put it in a new container, the particles can just spread out even more. Because, again, the attractions are very low between the gas particles. Number four, use the kinetic theory and attractive forces to explain why a liquid has a definite volume and shape and a shape that can vary. Okay, so we know it can take the shape of its container and that's due to kinetic theory. The motion of the particles is enough to where they can move past one another. So they'll move past one another to take the shape of the container. 
However, because the particles are close together, the attractive forces don't allow it to expand like a gas. It's still going to take up the same amount of volume. So the motion of the particles allows it to take the shape of the container, but the attractive forces keep it from taking the volume of the container. So number five, explain why a solid has a definite shape and volume. Well, solids, the particles are only allowed to vibrate in their fixed locations, so it can't change shape or volume because the particles are in fixed positions. They're still moving, it's vibration, but it can't take the shape or volume of the container. Number six, how does the arrangement of atoms in most solids differ from the arrangement of atoms in a liquid? Remember, they're both close together. I know you're probably like, how many times are you going to say that? Well, how many times am I going to mark it wrong in my class? Um, they're both really close together. However, a solid's particles are orderly, whereas a liquid's particles are random. All right, number seven. A hazardous chemical is leaking from a truck. Why would more people be affected if the chemical was a gas rather than a liquid? Well, if it's a liquid, it would spill onto the ground and then just stay there. At most, it would soak into the ground, but still you could get a shovel and, you know, get any dirt that's been saturated with the chemical and get it out of the location around people. Um, however, once it's a gas, a gas expands. And so if that gas starts leaking, it's going to expand. And so if there's a wind or something like that that can blow it, it'll expand even faster. Um, and so that's why, because a gas has an indefinite volume, whereas a liquid has a definite volume. All right, so hopefully you understand a little more about the difference in solids, liquids, gases, and plasmas. And you realize that liquids particles are close together like a solid, and solids particles are moving. They're vibrating their fixed locations. Please don't miss that.